Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1388. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here. We got to see how to calculate the average number of days between order date and ship date. Now, this question was I've got two columns of data and I want to know the average number of days between them without using a helper column. Now, I'm going to start off by showing us how it works with the helper column. And by doing that, it will help us figure out how to do a formula that doesn't rely on the helper column. Now here we have an earlier date and a later date. Earlier date, later date. So whenever we want to calculate the difference between later and earlier date, we make a formula. Equal sign, and I'm going to use my left arrow to get the ship date, which is the later date, minus the order date left arrow, left arrow, that's the earlier date. Now, in this particular example, there's zero dates because it was ordered and then shipped on the same day. Control-Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. And then in the lower right-hand corner, there's a little green box. If I take my selection cursor and hover over it, I see that crosshair cursor. That allows me to double-click and copy the formula down. Now, if I go all the way down to the bottom, Control down arrow, and hit the F2 key to put it in edit mode, I can see that my formula is working perfectly. Later date minus earlier date. Escape, up arrow. Now, once we have the actual days as a helper column, we can simply use the average function. Now, I typed A-V-E-R, and in my dropdown, I see the function I want in blue. So I hit the Tab key. Now I can highlight in the number one argument, click in the top cell, Control shift down arrow to highlight all the way down to the bottom. And to jump back to the active cell, I can use the keyboard Control backspace, close parentheses, and Enter. So the actual average number of days between order date and ship date is 0.88 days. Now I see this should be order, number of days between order and ship date. Now, Notice if we wanted to do it in a single cell without this helper column, well, we'd have to somehow generate all of these numbers in that cell and then use the average function to calculate the average. Now, to figure out how to do that, let's look down here, and I'm going to use the F2 key. Notice this is a standard Excel formula where we take one cell minus another cell. That means one item minus another item. Now, if I wanted to go down. Enter F2. That is, again, a standard formula. One item minus another item. But watch this. If I kind of do this in high speed, it's as if I want to take the whole blue column and subtract the orange column. So no problem. I'm going to do that in this cell. Now, before I do this, I actually would like to name this entire column order date and then name this entire column ship date. Now, I'm going to use the Control key and the wheel on my mouse to zoom out. I could highlight this entire range. And to give it a defined name, which means it will be a name substitute for the range, I could come up to the Name box, click, and then type Order Date, and then hit Enter. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click Escape. Anytime you actually have the range that you want to name, and the name directly above it, we simply can highlight the two names and the two columns, go up to the Formula Ribbon tab to find Names group, and there it is, Create from Selection. Now notice in that screen tip, Control-Shift-F3 is the keyboard. Now this is something I do all the time, so this is one of the keyboards I have memorized. Control-Shift-F3. No matter whether you use the ribbon or the keyboard, you'll always get Create Names from Selection. Now, it's trying to be polite. It's saying, do you want to name from the top? Well, we do. And the left. That means it would name this cell, each one of those things. We definitely don't want that. So uncheck left. All we want is top row. When I click OK, now watch this. I can come up to the Name box. And there are our names. If I select Order date, instantly it's highlighted. Select ship date, boom. Now we're allowed to use those defined names and formulas rather than highlighting the entire column. Now, 
Remember what we said, F2, Enter, F2, Enter, F2, Enter. It's as if we have a blue column minus an orange column. So let's try it. Equals, and I'm going to type the name, ship. Notice, drop down. That little function icon means that's a function. The gold dog tag is the icon for defined names. Once it's highlighted in blue, I can hit the Tab key. Minus order. And there it is. I see it on my drop down tab. And there it is, a whole blue column minus an orange column. Now, this is much different than the cell formulas we had down here. This is a bunch of items minus another bunch of items. We call this an array formula because we're doing an operation, in our case subtraction, on an array of items here and an array of items here. Now, if I hit Enter, it's going to give me a value error because that little F2 formula element did calculate all of the days between. It calculated the entire column. But Excel can't display that many numbers in a single cell. So watch this. We're going to evaluate this to verify that, in fact, we simulated this whole column in the single cell. With the cursor at the end, hit the F9 key. you got to be kidding me, 01013, just what we have here. So it works. Control-Z, we just need to put that whole resultant array of items into the average function, A-V-E-R. I see my function in blue, tab. Now I'm going to come to the end and close parentheses. Now, this is a special type of formula called an array formula. And if I hit Enter, it's not going to work. It gives me a value error, which says you forgot to use the special keystroke for array formulas. Now I'm going to hit F2 to put it back in edit mode. Excel needs a prompt to know to calculate this as an array formula, calculate the helper column we see here in our cell, and then give those numbers to average to calculate. So the way we tell Excel to calculate this as an array formula is we use the keystrokes, Control, Shift, and Enter to enter the formula into the cell. Immediately, we look up to the formula bar to verify that the curly brackets are in the formula. Those curly brackets are automatically put in by Excel, and they mean Excel understood that you meant to calculate this as an array formula. So we do Control Shift Enter. Excel puts those curly brackets in. And there's our single cell formula. If I highlight all these and delete, we could see, of course, this formula doesn't work, but that one's working perfectly. Now watch this, F2. The reason why is it's looking at the source data and not the helper column. Now I just used F2 to put this in edit mode. If I use Enter right now, it would not calculate correctly. So you either have to re-enter it with Control-Shift-Enter or use the Escape key. The Escape key will always revert back to what we had in the cell before I put it in edit mode. So I'm going to use Escape. Now I'm going to use Control-Z to bring these back so we leave that as a trail. Now I'm going to hit F2 again. There's an interesting thing about Excel functions. There's four, about 450 functions in Excel, and there are actually five functions that can do array operations without any special keystroke. Well, the number one argument inside the average function is not one of the lucky five. I'm going to escape and then show you an alternative here that will avoid having to do the special keystroke. Now, when you calculate an average, you're really adding them all up and dividing by the count. Well, there's a special function equals SUMP, and I see some product. So I hit tab. Some product is one of five functions. Some product, lookup, index, aggregate, and chi square test are the five functions that have arguments that can handle array operations without Control Shift Enter. So that array one there, if we put an array operation there and hit Enter, some product will calculate correctly. Now, some product usually takes an array times an array times an array. Three different arrays multiplies, which is the product part, 
and then adds the results of multiplying those three arrays. But we're going to use sum product for one of its very great uses. We're just going to use the first argument to make our array calculations and then add. We're not going to use any of the other arguments. So I'm going to highlight. And this is the other way to put define names in. I simply highlight. And of course, it puts ship date minus order date. Now remember, if we're calculating an average, we first need to calculate all the differences, close parentheses, and then add them. So in the numerator, when I hit Enter, would be 22. If I added all of these right here, I'd get exactly 22. So I come back, F2. Now for an average, you have to divide by the count. Now luckily, dates are numbers. So I can use the count function. And if you read the screen tip, specifically counts the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. So I can highlight either one of these columns. Now I'm going to hit Tab and then highlight the ship date, for example. Now I can close parentheses. And now when I hit just Enter, the formula calculates correctly. Some product here did the array operation without any special keystroke, and then we divided by count. Now, for some craziness, I'm going to type a period right here and then enter. Here are index, lookup, sum product, and aggregate. Now, I would never do any of these formulas. If I had to choose a formula that I wanted to use, I'd, I'd probably use this one, or maybe this sum product where I just put the average in there. But those are crazy, silly formulas. These are the three we probably use. All right, so in this video, specifically, we saw how to calculate the average number of days between a ship date and an order date using average and an array operation, and remembering to use Control, Shift, and Enter. All right, we'll see you next video.